Clearly, I don't know origami. And I'm not an engineer, but I do know great engineering when I see it. It's one of the reasons I've been a lifelong car nut. I've got a sense that the engineers at Mercedes-Benz know origami a heck of a lot better than I do. So here's three examples from my SLK 350 of how those engineers have taken the art of folding and transforming something from one thing into another to blend art and science together in the making of their great automobiles. So let's cover the most obvious one first. That's the folded convertible hardtop on the SLK 350. Now this was 2005 when this car was made. So a folding hardtop that works this well and is this well integrated into the design of a car to me was kind of unheard of during this era. And as you look at the way Mercedes has executed this hardtop, broken into several sections so it folds into a really compact trunk area, gives you the ability to still use the trunk. The fact that the trunk lid is designed to be double hinged so that you can open the trunk for access to cargo, but it also opens up to receive the top. Really a, a miracle of modern engineering and kind of the best example of automotive origami that I see when I'm out on the roads. So this is my first example and certainly one of the first things that attracted me to the SLK 350 was the engineering and the design that goes into this. And it sort of makes me smile when I imagine the engineers sitting around for months designing all the mechanisms and hinges that had to be put in to make this really complex mechanism work in the SLK 350. Next up is a much maligned example of automotive origami in the SLK 350. Any visit to the message boards or the fan groups for this car will show post after post of people raging against the poor design of this particular accessory in the car. Nonetheless, I appreciate Mercedes for including it in a vehicle with two seats and a, a pretty small cabin where it's very difficult to put extra creature comforts in a really small space. It's a necessary item and one that isn't always well executed in every car that you find. What is it? Well, it's cup holders. I know that my grande mocha is a big part of my morning and I need a place to put my tasty beverage when I get in the car. And other cars that I've had like the BMW Z4 are not perfect either. They've got uh, the plug-in cup holder that used to be in the Mark I and Mark II Z4 where it basically sticks in the center console. It's in the way of the passenger's leg if you've got someone riding with you. Other cars will try to put a cup holder back here behind the shifter, behind the handbrake, and it inevitably gets in the way when you're trying to shift. So it's hard in a car of this size to fit cup holders in in a way that aren't going to ruin your driving experience. So what did Mercedes do? Well, they put it right there. Well, that's kind of clever. You know, if you think about the engineering it took to create a folding cup holder that slides away into the dash out of your way in this very small cabin and still include two spaces for your drink and your passenger's drink, that's kind of neat. As the detractors note, and I don't disagree, it creates a little bit of a gravity issue here. If you've got a full beverage and you're bouncing over bumps or driving in a spirited way, you're going to have some of your grande mocha running down your radio and maybe your hand and your HVAC controls and your phone. So not ideal. Uh, there's some uh, uh, gravity and some physics that get in the way here, but I appreciate the Mercedes thought to put a cup holder into a very small cabin, thought of a clever way to put it in here, and it's another great example of art uh, origami engineering all coming together to, to create great automotive design. Our last example of origami based engineering in the SLK 350 is maybe a boring example, one of the most innocuous parts of any car, storage and cubby spaces, but a necessary part of engineering and a necessary part of making a two-seater livable. So Mercedes, like other car manufacturers, maximize the space inside their cars by getting a storage space tucked in here between the seats and the center console, and that's not uncommon. Uh, but this car, like a lot of cars, was manufactured and sold in both right-hand and left-hand drive models. So the Mercedes engineers had to figure out how to make all sorts of things related to the operation and the creature comforts of this car fit folks that were sitting in this seat, as well as folks that sit on this side. So for a left-hand drive car like this one, it stands to reason that I'd want to get access to the items I put inside this center console storage. So I want a lid on my storage compartment that allows it to open and let me get my wallet or my sunglasses or whatever I've put inside that center console area. Mercedes went a step further. They gave us a deeper storage bin. Again, not unusual. Uh, it's good design and good ergonomics and giving us every inch of storage space that we can use inside a pretty small car. But Mercedes didn't stop there. The lid doesn't just open this way. Remember, left-hand drive models, right-hand drive models. So the lid also opens this way and this way 
And this way. And this way. And this way. That's not engineering anymore. That's not even origami. That's witchcraft. Mercedes, how have you done that? So there you have it. Just three examples from my SLK 350 of what I think makes cars endlessly fascinating. The ways engineers solve problems by using art and science, and in so doing, create a little character, making every car a little bit different. What about your cars? Is there anything that you discovered about a car that you bought after you owned it that made it a little more special to you, a little more unique? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And please take time to subscribe and turn on notifications so as I post more episodes uh, exploring the fascination of this car and others, as well as my track driving experience, you'll be sure to be notified about new episodes. As always, thanks for watching.